Um, actually, uh, my name is Dirk, and uh, I apologize today. I'm, a, a virus has hit our household, and I'm not not. I'm, I can hardly see. <laughs> So you're stuck with me for the little while. Thank you for coming on this uh, last day of uh, not only the last Sunday, but the last day of 2023. Uh, I would. Uh, I know there's a printed version of this uh, for people who are in the temple. So I would like to do a little bit of house cleaning on this before I get started. Some housekeeping, I mean because there are mistakes in the one that's printed that I didn't catch until it was too late, until copies were already made. So people in the temple, if uh, on your copy, you'll see uh, the line, Tena cha sama yena arya wulu kiteshwaro bodhisattva mahasattva gambirayam. Now that I in gambirayam should have a long mark over it like it does on the screen. People on in on Zoom can see it the correct way. And I am also going to take that out of here so it won't be confusing to people when we go further on. And then one, two, three lines down is the same word again. It should have a long mark over the eye. And then, oops. Yeah, just making things worse. <laughs> and then a couple of lines, uh, another three lines or so down, it's there again. Also needs a long mark over the eye, just to be thorough. And then, so quite a ways down, you'll see all these uh, lines starting with na, N-A. So you got a line starting na chakshur na, and then the next one after that, na chakshur datur, and then na vidya, na vidya. There is an A, long A missing in the, it's, I believe the printed one says Y-V, N-N-A or Y, but it should be Y, long A, V, A, N, N, A. That's Ya, one, uh, that's how that's pronounced. And then one more, almost to the end, after the, uh, you see the Sadhu, Sadhu, right above that, there's a line that says Tazmat, Sad. Dare we you tarya? The last word of that is sadu karamadat. So in that sadu, that is marked long and shouldn't be. That should be short. And that's just for to help uh, in the recitation. And that's all. Sorry about that. I'm actually, there are a couple of other things that I should tell you about this text. Uh, you'll see some words, some M, the letter M with the dot under it. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about, here's an example for people online, but there are a lot of them. Now that is not an M, pronounced as an M, except in certain cases. Other times it's pronounced as different kinds of an N. It's just showing that it's a nasal consonant. Uh, and in fact, that kind of leads me into how I want to start with this text. Um, the history of this text, that it's a nasal consonant. And sometimes in texts, it's written as an N, the, the appropriate N. And sometimes they just use the M. Uh, and neither way is more correct than the other. Both ways are correct. Uh, most of the more modern texts will give you the correct N in the text. <clears throat> but the textual history of this uh, of this sutra is complicated. 
at best. Uh, first of all, it does come probably originally from the longer Prajnaparamita Sutras. Now, it went to China before it went to Tibet. And so Kumara Jiva did a translation of it, which matches the Chinese translation of the 25,000 line Prajnaparamita Sutra. And then Zhuang Shu did a translate that I probably didn't say that correctly, but he's the uh, Tang Dynasty monk, uh, after whom uh, actually Journey to the West is a legend of. He uh, then did a translation which retained most of Kumara Jiva's translation. And then he said that Avar, uh, 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 Avalokiteshvara uh, taught him a longer version, which is similar to the version we have here. So there's a lot of speculation about what that means and where it, all those texts came from and whether or not there was an original Sanskrit text that was translated into Chinese or whether the Chinese uh, Zhuang Zhuang text was translated into Sanskrit and then brought to India. That's one of the theories. In any case, what we do know is that this for sure is that this uh, this form of the sutra was brought to Tibet. Original first known instance of it was brought to Tibet by Vimalamitra, the Dzogchen master. Uh, we have three strains of Dzogchen in Tibet. One is Vi Virochana, the translator. One is Guru Rinpoche, and one is Vimalamitra. Which were later synthesized, uh, you know, by Long Chen Ba. But so Vimala Mitra not only brought Dzogchen to Tibet, but he also brought the Sutra to Tibet. Now, most of the Zen, most Zen sects. Oh, that uh, I'll back up a little here. Uh, so that short Sutra, which is the one that Kumara Jiva uh, translated into Chinese. Some people believe that that sutra, or that that's originally, that's the original of the Heart Sutra anyway, that that was actually a Vajrayana uh, uh, excerpt from the Prajnaparamita Sutras that was used as a Dharani, which is sort of as a mantra for continuous recitation, uh, also for purposes of healing and for removal of obstructions and things like that, but more like a, as used more as a mantra. And then that the Dharani was turned more into sutra form by adding what we have now, <clears throat> which is the, uh, the usual sutra form of uh, <clears throat> one, thus did I hear at one time and so forth. And then with the closing, the Buddha talking. So most of the most throughout most of Asia, certainly the Zen, almost all of Zen, I can't say all, but all I'm aware of, uh, in all of Zen through not only J Japan, but China, Vietnam, uh, Korea, uh, they all <clears throat> use the short version. Uh, whereas the Tibetans tend to use the long version, and the long version is what we have. And so, we know that it came to Tibet in Sanskrit, but there is no Sanskrit original. Uh, so, the texts that we have of the sutra are translated from Tibetan or Chinese or Japanese back into Sanskrit. So this one, I believe, to have been translated from Tibetan uh, back into Sanskrit. It, it's probably it's very probably very close to whatever the original might have been that was tr translated into Tibetan. But um, I've also seen a video of the Dal of a uh, Western monk uh, reciting this uh, for the Dalai Lama, and the Dalai Lama showing great reverence for it. So I take that as a seal on it.
from uh, from the Dalai Lama, and that's good enough for me. <clears throat> I do not, I haven't been practicing this for very long in Sanskrit, so I, I have had to refine my own approach. I didn't learn it from anyone else. I had to, I taught it to myself. Uh, I compared a whole lot of texts. I've read the entire thing in Sanskrit. Uh, I've compared different trans, different original texts and found errors in all of them in the Sanskrit itself. And that's probably due to copying errors rather than the original translator, but who knows? And then there are, of course, other ambiguities because uh, this is, when we talk about Sanskrit and we talk about Buddhist texts, we, we might be actually talking about two different Sanskrits. Uh, we Usually Sanskrit means classical Sanskrit. Uh, with Buddhist texts, there's a greater or lesser mixture of what's been called Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit. Not everybody agrees with that name for it, but it's a it's a mixture of Sanskrit and uh, other languages that were prevalent in India at the time that these sutras were written down. Um, and the earlier the sutra, the more likely it has the uh, hybrid Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit uh, effective in it. And this text has a fair amount, but not 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 a lot. This text doesn't have very much actually at all. Uh, the verse summary of the 8,000 line Prajnaparamita Sutra, which is probably the oldest of the sutras, the Prajnaparamita Sutras, and the verse summary is probably the oldest part of the oldest sutra, uh, Prajnaparamita Sutra. Now that has a huge amount of Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit in it. You know, all that means is that probably these texts were originally not written down in Sanskrit. There were uh, texts that were at some point translated into Sanskrit, or even as they say, Sanskritized, and then over time became more and more uh, conformed to Sanskrit. Anyway, so. I think this is a worthy text for practice. The reason I haven't practiced it for very long is because I was not good enough. I didn't feel that I was good enough in Sanskrit to uh, take on this text yet until a few weeks ago. Uh, and so now that I have taken on this text, I've done it. And I just wanted to sh uh, share where I'm at and see if you know, maybe uh, if somebody else would like to join in. Uh, practicing with me over time, that would be great. Uh, I don't have it memorized. It is not. It is a little bit challenging, but if I can teach it to myself, you can certainly learn it with, with help, certainly from me. And uh, We don't have to learn it in Sanskrit, though. If anybody wants to do that, ultimately, we can go through the whole vocabulary and the grammar of it and, and do that. But even that will be done more easily if you just learn how to chant it in Sanskrit. So <clears throat> I'm going to uh, see if there's anybody has any comments or questions before we get started, but I'm going to try to just go through this text as long as my voice holds out. Uh, <coughs> and I apologize that I'm not as prepared as I might have been. I wasn't aware I was doing this until a few days ago, and then I got sick on top of it. So uh, anybody have any comments or suggestions or? about what we're going to do? No? OK. <laughs> I would, uh, There's there are two books that I could recommend if you want to look into the history of the Lotus Sutra. And if you would like to read uh, a modern, uh, it's really the Zen translation. First is uh, Thich Nhat Hanh's uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Other Shore. He has a, uh, that'll be the short version. Uh, and then I have to look at this. Uh, it's a, it's called the Heart Sutra by Katsuaki Tanahashi. And he goes through a long history of it. Of course, he's talking mostly from the perspective of the Chinese uh, or J Chinese Japanese, 
Sino-Japanese tradition, let's say. <clears throat> but he does also include uh, Jimala Mitra bringing it to Tibet and also Atisha a few centuries later bringing it to Tibet. Um, and then there's also Donald Lopez did a, a, a book called The Heart Sutra, which I think is a good, uh, sc another scholarly text on, on it. Uh, of course, then there's also the Heart Attack Sutra by, uh, oh gosh, let's combine aphasia with sickness and uh, I can't remember his name, sorry, but it's called the Heart Attack Sutra by, by a really great translator who's uh, German in origin. He was a German doctor who uh, translates into English. <clears throat> I almost have his name. Nope, can't do it. Okay, so this is the first. Let's do the title. Uh, if you can, if don't don't be afraid to make mistakes. I make many mistakes. I'll probably make some mistakes today. So, just give it a shot. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Now you see what we're doing here. Also, again, the sounds that I'm making, there are various ways to do it, of course, and none of them is right or wrong. Uh, I'm following the school that says that rather than using accent, we use time. There's always time. It's called quantitative. It's a quantitative language. But there's also a, an accent. But to do both together, it gets really complicated. And so we're just going to do the time. So that long, the, the, the bar, anytime you see a, a bar over a vowel, it means it's a long vowel, long in time, not long like we do a ah and a, but more like a ah and a. Ah. So arya, kagawati. Now, also, BH, when you see BH or GH uh, or DH in Sanskrit, that's one, that's just one letter. It's not considered two like we would think of it. So that A before the BH stays short. So it's Arya Bhagavati, Arya Bhagavati. Prajna paramita, prajna paramita. So there you have that first pra, you might think that would be short, but it's not because it's in front of two consonants. So that makes it long also, which is, makes it a little bit harder to do it live and without practice. But so that's that pra, that uh, is also long. Prajna paramita. Prajna paramita. And then that R with the dot under it is often, you know, people often pronounce that as ri, but it's really er. It's just a, it's a vo vocalized R. It's an er, it's a vowel. It's actually a vowel. And that's a short vowel, unless it has a bar over the top of it. So that's her daya, and that doesn't make that a in front of it long, because it's it's not a consonant; it's a vowel. So it's prajna paramita her daya sutra. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm not going to do this with every line. The title's a good place to start with this. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Often also at the end of a, a line, at the end of the line, you can consider it to be long. You can consider that to be a long syllable. Now this is the title, so I'm not sure how that works with the title, honestly. This would be put in the vocative case too, which I'm not, I, I need to find, I need to research that more. But it's uh, otherwise it would be Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutram, which would be the normal form. But that sutra means that it's like 
addressing it. And that might be something used for titles. I don't know. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Arya, see, I made a mistake. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Because I have a tendency when I see the BH to want to make that A in front of it long. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Uh, which really means Arya is noble, let's say, the noble goddess Bhagavati, the noble, uh, 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 the noble uh, uh, exalted one of feminine gender. Uh, but Prajna Paramita, uh, that's often called perfection of wisdom. Uh, I'm not going to argue with it right now. Her Daya is the heart. In sutra, you know. So let's give it a shot. And namach, you'll see namach, and you'll also see namo. And they're actually exactly the same word. They just have different forms because of some of the rules of the way Sanskrit's written. So depending on where it's written, what's a, what's written after it, sometimes it'll be namach, and sometimes it'll be namo. So here it's namach. Namah sarvajnaya. And namah, nam, namah comes from the verb meaning to bow. So, uh, but it's, you know, I, so I prostrate. That's good. I prostrate to the Arya triple gem. Sarvajnaya more, mean, more like means all knowledge. Uh, but so I'm using the translation that we use in the temple here. This is not me translating. This is the translation text interlined with, with the Sanskrit. But I'm just telling you right now with that one, Sarvajnaya really means by itself uh, more like all, all Sarva and Jnaya, all wisdom, all knowledge, all understanding, all insight, which is also the triple gem, really, right? So, Namah Sarvajnaya. Also, if you have that H with the dot under it, that is a sound like uh, sometimes people, uh, you'll hear, especially. Uh, Indian Hindus will will usually say aha, but that really even if it, if you do use the form of aha, it usually only comes at the end of a verse line. Otherwise, it's a ah, it's a it's a it's an H with a ha, little bit of a breath. I probably overdo it. It's a, just a soft, very soft namah. And, but, and that will always mean that the uh, vowel before it is a long vowel also. So, namah sarvajnaya. Namah sarvajnaya. Now, I always have a trouble. I'm, I'm not going to do this with every, every line. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not going to go into this much detail. But on these first lines, you know, and the title, because evam maya sutram, shrut, evam maya shrutam is in every sutra. This is something that's in every Sanskrit sutra. Evam maya shrutam. Now, evam uh, thus, maya by me, Shrutam was heard. This by me was heard. Thus, but it's it's more like thus by me was heard. But thus by me was heard. Uh, but so, awam maya shrutam. The way we're doing it, awam maya shrutam. Now I actually observe the. I observe the accent when I do that one. So it's Ewam Maya Shrutam. Ewam Maya Maya Shrutam. And I have a hard time. It's hard to do. 
evam maiha shrutam evam maiha shrutam and now I'm just going to do the sutra slowly. And you can feel free to interrupt me if I really mess up. <clears throat> Ekas min samaye bhaguvan rajagurhe viharati sma gurdrakute parvate mahata bhi Shu Sangena Sadam Mahata Bodhisattva Sangena Tena Kalu Samayena Bhagavan Gambira Wasam Bodha Nama Samadin Samapana Dana just, I'm gonna, so sorry. Dana just some yena arya walo gidesh waro bodhisat wo mahasat wo gambirayam prajna paramitayam. Jar yam charamana e wam Now e is always long and o is always long. And there are bodhisattva mahasattva are the same as bodhisattva mahasattva, just like nama. Okay, next line. Pancha skandan stanscha swabawashunyam we awalo kayat kayati. There, I messed it up. Pancha skandan stanscha swabawashunyam we awalo kayati. Atta yushman chari putro buddha nupawe nar yawalo kiteshwaram bodhisattvam mahasattva meta da wochat. Yakash chikula putro gambirayam prajna paramitayam cha yam cha tu kamakatam shikitavyam and there you go the s with the mark over the top of it that's a shh sh, sh, in the front of the mouth sound sh, like sh. Often you'll see it also written as, as, as you see it written in, as SH in a lot of transliterations. Yakash chit gula putro gambirayam prajna paramitayam char yam char tu kamakatam shititavyam. And C is always ch, ch, ch. E wa mukta arya vulo kitesh varo bodhisattva mahasattva ayushman tam shari putram etada vochat. Yakash chi. Chari putra kuda putro wa kuda du hita wa gambirayam prajna paramitayam char yam char tu kamaste nai wam uya walo Pancha skandan, 
I'm sorry. Pan cha skan dan stan zamanu pashati. Rupam shunyata shunyatai wa rupam. Rupan pertak shunyata shunyatai ya na pertagrupam. Ya drupam sa shunyata ya shunyata ta drupam. E wam vedana sams nya samskara vish vish nya nani chashunyata. E wam shari putra sarva dharma shunyata lakshana anut. Pana anihuta amala awimala anuna asampurna dasma tar hi shari putra shunyatayam na hupam na vedana na samjnan samskara na vijnanam na chakshur na nash. I'm going to start that line over. Pardon me. Na chakshur na shrotram na granam na jiva na kayo na mano na rupam na shabdo na gando na sprashtavyam na dharmach na chakshur to ya one man o dat to na dam a dat to na man o is yan a dat to na we ya na we ya nak shy o ya one jarha mara nam na jarha mara nak na dukkha samudaya nivo de maga na jnanam na praptir na prapti tasma chari putra a prapti tve na bodhisattva nam prajna paramitama shri ya viharat ya chitta varana chitta varana nasti tvadatrasto viparyasati kranto nishta nirvana triadva vihastita sarva buddha prajna paramitama srityanuttaram samyak sambodhima visam buddha jasmas nyatavyak prajna Parmita maha mantro maha vidya mantro nuttara mantro sam samma mantra ksavadu kaprasamana mantra ksatyam mityat wat prajna parmitaya muto mantra Trak tadyata gate gate par gate par sangate bodhiswaha gayata gate gate par gate par sangate bodhiswaha 
Tadyata gate gate par gate par sun gate bodhi swaha Atakaru baguan Tasmats ma dear you tai yar ya wuru kite shwarasya bodhi sat wasya maha sat wasya sadu karmadat sadhu sadhu kula putra e wan e tat Kula putra evumetad gambirayam prajna paramitayam charyam chartadyam yatatvaya nirdishtamanu modyaye savatatagatatairor had bih samyak sampudai Idama wuchad bagu anandamana ayushman chari putra ayavalu hideshwarascha bodhisattva mahasattva ksacha sawa vati parshat sadeva manushasurangan darwash Chaloko Bhagavato Bhashitama Bhyanandaniti Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutram Samaptam There, see you did it. So, shall we try it again? I'll try to do it just straight through this time, eh? My voice doesn't give out. Namah Sawas Nyaya Ewa Maya Shrutam Ekasmin Samaye Bhagavan Rajagur He Vihara Tisma. Here, I'll start over because I'm going to try to do it chanting style. Maybe we can develop our own. E kasmin samaye bhagavan rajagur he viharati sma gurdrukute parvate mahatabhikshu sanghena sadam mahatabhurisatva sanghena should have been bodhisattva sangena dena kalu dena kalu <laughs> dena kalu samayena bhag bhagavan gambira vasam bodhanam samadhim samapannah Okay, when I make mistakes, I'm just going to keep going anyway. Jaina to Samayena Ayava Loki Teshwaro Bodhisattva Mahasattva Gambirayam Prajna Paramitayam Charyam Charamana Evam Viyava Loka Yitkisma Panchas kandam stams chaswa bhava shunyam vi avalokayati Atayushman chari putro buranu bhavain haya avalokiteshwaram bodhisattvam mahasattvam etada vochat Yak kashti kula putro gambirayam prajna paramitayam chayam chatukamah katam shi shitavyam evamuk 
Sita Ayavlukiteshwaro Bodhisattva Mahasattva Ayushmantam Shariputram Etadavochat Yakashi Chariputra Kulaputro Wakuluduhit Kuluduhita Wakambirayam Prajna Parmitayan Chayan Chatukamas Stain I Wam Weavalokayitavyam Panchas Kandam Stamscha Bau Shunyam Samanu Pashati Rupam Shunyat Pardon me. Rupam shunyata shunyata wa rupam rupam apertak shunyata shunyata yan aperta grupam yadrupam sa shunyata ya shunyata ta drupam Evam Vedana Samsnya Samskara Vijna Nanicha Shunyata Evam Shariputra Savatam Shunyata Lakshana Shunyata Lakshana Anutpana Ani Ah, man, I really botched that line, so I'm going to start it over. E one shari putra savadam shunyata lakshana anutpana anihuda amala avimala anuna asampurna tasmata hi shari putra shunyataihana rupam vedanana samsnana samskarana vijnanam na chakshur na shrotram na granam na jiva na kayo na mano na rupam na shabdo na gando na sprashtav yam na dharma na chakshur datur yavan mano datur na dharma datur Turn mano vision that to no weed ya na with ya na shayo ya one jurhammaran hum na jurhammaran hakshayah na tu kasamudaya ni hold a magan jianam na praptir na prapti. Tasma chari putra aprapti twena bodhisat one nam prasnya ponamitama sritya vihara chat chitta varanach chitta varananasti twadatrasto viparya sati kranto nishta nirvanach. Triad Waviyas Tita Sarva Buddha Prajna Paramitama Sri Yanuttaram Samyak Sambodhima Pisam Buddha Tasmas Nyatavya Prajna Paramita Maha Mantro Maha Vidya Mantro Nuttara Mantro Samasama Mantra Sadukha Prasamana Mantra Satyam Amityatvat Prajna Paramitaya Muto Mantra Tadyata gati gati para gati para sangati bodhiswaha tadyata gati gati para gati para sangati bodhiswaha 
गते था गते गते पार गते पार संगते बोल स्वाहा कात कालु भगवान ताजमात समाद्यव युताय हर्याव रुखितेश्वरास्य पुरिसात्वास्य महासात्वास्य साधुकार्मदात साधु साधु कुल पुत्र एवं एतात कुल पुत्र एवं एतात गंभीर हैं हम प्राज्ञा परमिताय हम चाय हम चातव्यम यतात्वया निर्दिष्टा मनुमोद्याये सा वत्तागत्ताय रोहाद बीक सम्यक संबुदाय Idam avo chat bhagavan nandamanha ayushman chari putra ayavalhuki teshwarascha bodhisattva mahasadvaksacha savavati parshatsa devaman nusasuran gandharvascha loko bhagavato bhashitama bhyanan dhaniti prajna paramita hrdaya sutram samaptam and of course for me the hardest one is parshat sadeva manushasuran gandhar vascha but i can still to do it sometimes so what do you think ellen go ahead Dirk, thank you so much i i'm intrigued by the um words that are very very long that seem to represent a number of english words linked together uh, Can you well, comment on that? There, there are two things that you'll see that happen in Sanskrit. One is that there are just rules for writing words together based on their sounds. And that may or may not imply that there's actually a relationship. And that, for instance, let's see, just an easy one to say, uh, pancha, and notice this pancha was written with an M. I just taught, copied it. It really should be. I would just turn around, turn around, change this to this. This is the way you'll usually see it. Oh, I got to get my keyboard right. Yeah, let's see if I can hit the right keys. There. Pancha. Pancha. So scan, here we have skan, dam, stam, sha. And that's really, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. I don't know if people in the temple can see what I'm doing or not, but it's uh, skanda, which is a word we know, uh, which is skandan. An. Yeah, it's actually the words. So it's these skandhas and these skandhas is really that. So that's just three words, right? But they're written together and sounded together. They change their sound because of the way they're written together. That's just Sanskrit rules for remaking the sound. It's called sandhi. It's how the how the how the how it's put to, how the sounds are put together. Because early on in Sanskrit in the Vedas. Uh, they they were making spells that they believed had to be spoken exactly correctly in order for them to be efficacious. And so in the early writing of the Vedas, they developed these ways of making the, writing the sounds exactly as they're sounded. We make sound changes in English when we talk to. Um, I can't think of anything off the top of my head because I'm not good at dredging things up right now, but we change the way things sound when we speak to, but we don't change the way they're spelled when we write them, which would make it a lot harder if we did to try to read it. 
So for us, we just know that we pronounce it differently, even though we write we write it differently than we pronounce it. But in Sanskrit, you get they want you to pronounce it the way you read it. So then on that same line, how about this the last word? Does it also mean something like empty of inherent nature? All bawa, put together? bawa is being shunya. Yeah, see this is th this now is that's the next one. This is a compound. Uh, it although it's kind of a here, let me see. I've got to move things out of my way. Can I go to a different tab? Since we're looking at, at it, let's look at it here. Swabawa Shunyan. Uh, is that the same one? No, that's a different five skandhas, isn't it? Well, let's do this one because it's almost the same. It's actually simpler. So here is Swabawa being emptiness. So that's a compound. That's not just written together haphazardly. Let's go back to this. Bhavawa Shunyan Samanu. Uh, this, 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 these two words are written together. Bhavawa Shunyan is is a is a uh, uh, compound. But it's written with this because the N and the S just get written together in Sanskrit. If a word ends in an N and begins with an S, they just are written together. So the next word, Samanu, Pashyati. Pashyati is saw or see, seeing. Be, the, here is beholding. Uh, the Samanu, man, I don't remember exactly how that works together there. Samanu Pashati. Let's do it this way. Bawa Shunyan Samana Now I'm sorry, I don't I don't remember how those words break up, but that's another that's another that's another joining of words. So whenever you see long words, it could either be a compound or it could just be the way it's written together. And and they write it together for the poeticness of it or based on no, that. No, they write sort it together because that's tradition. the way Sanskrit that's just the way Sanskrit's written. Those are the rules of writing Sanskrit. Huh. Really fascinating. Thank you. In origin, it was because they wanted to, that they were making the sounds. It's mm -hmm. also the thing about, uh, like, if you look at this Dev Devanagari here, see, I took this from Devanagari and then put it in, transliterated it. But if you look at the Devanagari, it's much more compact yeah. than, than uh, when it's written out. And that's part of what was going on. And they were writing on uh, the, the, writing materials were very scarce and expensive. So David Agri is this condensed form of writing. Oh. But that's just the way Sanskrit's written. Yeah, it's cool. Well, and, and there's no difference in Sanskrit, whether it's written in David Agri, whether it's written in transliteration. Now you see, here, here's what I do. You're, what you're looking at here is my worksheet. So I take the David Agri, I, transli I transliterate it, into Roman, and then I go through and I break up the words that are in the Roman. So there it is, Samanu Pashati. That's what that that's those Sam Anu. Those are both they're they're pre verbs really in this case. They're just part of the verb, but they're pieces added on to the verb Pashati, which is a third person singular verb meaning to see. He she it sees. Uh, so this, though, this Romanized is as much Sanskrit as, as the Devanagari is. 
And when it's in Tibetans, when the Tibetans write a mantra, a Sanskrit mantra, it's just as much Sanskrit when it's written in Tibetan script as it is when it's written in Devanagari or whether it's written in any kind of script. All, the, the tradition in Sanskrit was that it would be written in the script of the whatever the normal script of the people who were writing it used. But they always observe those rules of Sandhi, of how it's put together, even though it's in a transliteration script. I hope I didn't overcomplicate that. No. I only it's, overcomplicate it because I don't know it well enough. It started out very complicated, so it's not very easy for you to overcomplicate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, should we try one more shot time through it? Then we can say we did it three times. Anybody else have a question or a comment? Was yeah. that going too? Yeah, Dirk, it's Susan. Um, is it correct that um, Sanskrit, you mentioned the Vedas. So is it correct that Sanskrit was not a vernacular language, that it was a sacred language, language and not spoken except by the Brahmins? That's a good question. Probably. It's pro it was probably always a literary language, but I'm not, but I, I don't know for sure. And also Vedic Sanskrit, when we just say, if we just use the word Sanskrit, we're referring to classical Sanskrit. Um, and then when you want to talk about the Vedas, you talk about Vedic Sanskrit, because they are different. And I can tell you, because I took a class in Vedic, <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't a a language that was spoken by ordinary folk. We don't. I I don't think it's known for certain. Ah, okay. Uh, but probably not. Okay. It's like Pali was never a spoken language. Oh, I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. No, Pali Pali is a literary language. Oh. The Buddha never taught in Pali. No, I knew that, but it's just a literary language. Yeah. It's just written. Yep. Oh, it's a Middle that. Indic language, but it's the but Pali is a a literary language that only ha, only really exists in in Buddhist teachings. Yeah, yeah. But okay. the but the teachings were not spread in Pali orally. Right. Originally. Right. No, I know that. But okay, and so Sanskrit may or may not have. Been, but pro but, Sanskrit probably wasn't either. Okay. It was probably only it was probably a religious language. Yeah. Yeah. Uh for the, you know, the Vedic language. But right. I but I don't but we don't know this for sure because it it goes back to Indo-European and it it Yeah. It's hard it's hard to say exactly because okay, let's go into Middle Indic, you know. If you talk about uh you got Prakrit, you got Apabramsha, you've got uh Pali. And uh, those three, there's Prakrit's used to refer to all of the spoken languages, but there's also a language called Prakrit. So it's hard to, so there's Prakrit, the language, Apabramsha, Pali, and Sanskrit. They all, they all existed together and they're all really literary languages. And meanwhile, there are a bunch of other languages that are very close to them that the people spoke. Yeah, I see. Okay. Just sort of like a little bit like Latin and Latin, French, Italian, Portuguese, yeah. a little yeah. bit like that, Spanish, but not, not exactly, but similar. Right. Okay. And Latin, Latin, so Latin, though, was spoken at one time. Right, right, yeah. So uh, a Sanskrit may have been too, but not in the form that we have it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then, of course, when you do the Buddhist stuff, you got a whole different form of Sanskrit again. Arya Bhagavati Prajna Paramita Hridaya Sutra. Namak Sarvajnaya Evam Maya Shrutam Ekasmin Samaye Bhagavan Rajagur He Viharati Sma 
Gurdrakute Parvate Mahata Bhikshu Sangena Sada Mahata Bodhisattva Sangena Tena Kalu Samayena Bhagavan Gambira Vasambodhanam Samadim Samapanna Tena cha samayena arya varoki teshvaro bodhisattva mahasattva gambirayam prajna paramitayam jayam jaramana evam uya varokayatisma Pancha skandam stamscha svabhav shunyam viyavalokayati atayushmanchariputro vudanubhavenayavalokiteshwaras I'm sorry, I just completely lost eye focus and... Uh, I'm going to start over on that line. Ata yushman chari putro buddha nubha vainarya valoki teshwaram bodhisattvam mahasattvam etada vojat yakkaschit Kul putro gambirayam prajna paramitayam charyam chatukam makatam shikshitavyam evam mukta aryavalokiteshwaro bodhisattva mahasattva ayushmantam shariputram etadavochat Yakashi chari putra kula putro wa kula du ita wa gambir hayam prajna paramitayam charyam chatu kama stenai wam wia waloka itavyam panchas kantam stams chabawa bhav. Sorry. Pancha skandam stam chapao shunyan samanu pashati rupam shunyata shunyata rupam rupam pritak shunyata shunyata yana pritagrupam Yadrupam sa shunyata ya shunyata tadrupam evam vedana samsnya samskara vijna nanicha shunyata evam shariputra savadam shunyata lakshana anut Panna Nihuda Amala Vimala Anuna Asampurna Tazmatar His Tazmatar Hishari Putra Shunyatayan Rupam Vedanan Samsna Nasamskara Navijanam Nachakshur Nashrotram Nagranam Najiva Nakayo Namano I'm not going to leave that because I messed it up so badly. I have to overcome bad habits that I developed when I started learning this by having things, reading them wrong. Dasma tar hishari putra shunyatayam narupam navedana samsnyana samskarha navijnanam Nachakshur nashrotram na granam na jiva na kayo na manon na rupam na shabdo 
na gando na sprashtavyam na dharmach na jakshu datu yavan na mano datu na dharma datu na mano vijnan datu na vidya na vidya nakshayo yavan jaram aranam na jaram aranakshaya na dukha samudaya nivoda maga na jnanam na praptir na prapti dasma chari putra aprap Dit we na bodhisat wanam prajna paramitama sridya vihara chitta varana chitta varana nastit vadatrasto it paryasati kranto nishta nirvana triadva vihasti ta sarva buddhah prajna paramitam shridya nuttaram samyak sampodim api sambuddhah tasmajnya tavyah prajna paramitam mahamantru mahavidya mantru nuttara mantru samasama mantrak sarva dukha prasamana mantrak satya mamityat wat prajna paramitaya muto mantrak Tadya tagate gate paragate par sangate bodhiswaha gate. I'm sorry. Tadya tagate gate paragate par sangate bodhiswaha. Tadya tagate gate paragate par sangate bodhiswaha. Atakalu bhagu wan tasmat tamma devi utai har yavuru kiteshwarasya bodhisat wasya mahasat wasya sadhu karamadat sadhu sadhu kula putra evam etat kula putra evam etat Gambirayam prajna paramitayam charyam chatavyam yatatvaya nirdishtamanu modyaye savatatagatatairor hadbi samyak sambudai Idam avu chad bhagavan nandamana ayushman chari putra ayavalu kiteshwarash chaburi sadvo mahasat vaksa chasava vati parshat deva manush chasa Parshat Sadev Manushasuran Gandhar Vashya Bloko Bhagavato Bhashitama Bhyanandaniti Prajna Paramita Hrdaya Sutram Samaptam There we go. Fortunately, unlike the Vedic peoples, as Buddhists, we don't have to pronounce everything exactly perfectly for it to be efficacious. In fact, there are Pali sutras where the, uh, you know, the the uh, the monks go to the Buddha and they say, uh, you know, uh, so and so is not pronouncing this stuff the correct way. Should we correct him? And the and Buddha says, no, that's that's no. You shouldn't correct him. It, it's not dependent upon how it's pronounced. 
whether the teaching is correct or not has nothing to do with how well the words are pronounced. So we have text, we have uh, sutra authority for that. Um, I think that that's about all I can do. <laughs> I don't know about you. But any, anybody else have uh, any comments or as Lama says, complaints? I'm sure complaints would be valid. No? Well, then I, I will turn it over to the UMSE. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow, by the way, we are doing our New Year's Day recitation. Uh, so I'm not together. So if you have, you can sign up. Uh, it came in through the email. It's also uh, under news on the website will, is a link to it, to the sign up sheet if you would like to read part of the day tomorrow. And I hope to see you there. And I'll turn it over to who is our, you know, I can't tell for sure who the UNSA is today. Between my bad vision and. Okay. I think, it's autumn. I think it's autumn, Dirk. It is autumn. Okay. I thought it might be autumn, but I couldn't tell. All right. Testing, testing. Sorry about that. We were having mic issues. We're still having issues. Okay. Well. All right. Thank you so much, Dirk. That was uh, amazing, especially when you're sick. So, um, all right. We're going to do closing prayers in English. <laughs> Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Rezing Tianjin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. All powerful Chen Re oops, sorry. May all my viewers achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, magical display of all deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of a flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of entire host of Maras, Sangkapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Losangdrapa, I make request at your holy feet. Is, is there any announcements? Yes. Uh, we would like to know what the lineup is for tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, Ellen, are you going to send out some sort of a listing of who's speaking when, who's reading when? No, I, I don't actually know how that's going to happen. Dirk, do you have a recommendation about how we let people know? Uh, I haven't looked at the list yet, so... But when I do, I'll send it to everybody who's signed up because <laughs> we did ask for the email address. So, uh, and to anybody else who wants to see the list. Okay, thank you so I, much. I can look. I can look right now. Let's see here. Is there any other announcements? Yeah, um, I think emailing is good. Yeah, just um, 
to mention that next Saturday, uh, we're going to have a half day sit from 830 to 12 in the Gompa. And um, then thereafter, I think from at one to two, there is a an all Sangha meeting. So um, try to put it on your calendar to do one or both. And if you're going to do both, if you're going to come to the sit, you might want to bring a, a bag lunch or something. Um, so you can eat between um, the end of the the half day and the beginning of the the all sangha meeting. Yes, thank you, Susan. So all sangha meeting at one o'clock Saturday. Okay, all right. Thank and you so much, just everybody. For, just for oh. your just for your info. Uh, eight people have signed up and 62% say they want to be in the temple. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you more details later. Okay. I don't know if you know, Susan, or anybody else, there's a chat question from Maria about whether the Sangha meeting can or will be Zoomed. I have, I do not know. I, it was not the last time. Okay. We yeah. can investigate, Marie, yeah. though, and I'll let you know if it will. <laughs> if the community meeting will be on Thank Saturday. you. That'd be great. Saturday. Yeah. Good question, Marie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We don't know. We don't know. We'll let you know if we find out it will be. Or yes. even if we find out, it won't be. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Happy New Year, everyone. See you tomorrow. Happy Hopefully. New Year, y'all. Happy New Year. Thanks, Dirk. Oh, my God.